Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated continuing on with my historically accurate monster playthrough. In the Tip Volume 2 mod, we're now out of the realms of history. We're seeing ahistorical characters coming to power in Munster and Connacht at roughly the same time. All of our rulers to date were the uh, historical rulers of Munster and Connacht as well, actually. We were so close, we were so close to forming the High Kingship under Diarmid. But he has fallen at the last hurdle and it is now left to Arthur. Let's take a look at what kind of a character Arthur is. Oh boys, oh boys. So he has been our main spymaster. He's been the main spymaster of the kingdom for quite some time, I think, since Diarmid seized uh, Meath from him. First thing we're going to do, here is his wife, random courtier. We will divorce. And it's going to cost us piety. So here is the always allowed divorce of insular Christianity, which I do like. Uh, historically accurate. I think maybe if there was a financial payment, but we're getting very finicky now. We're getting very finicky. Uh, what you would have basically done is you would have just paid off your spouse. So we're going to divorce her. And that's going to open up some marriage alliances for us. We're going to come back to those in a few minutes. Where will we start? Oh lord, where will we start? We're in the midst of a war. We'll we'll start up here with the port. Now we don't really have any better candidates that we could put in instead of loan. This is hardly the person that was... Appointed bishop at some stage under Diarmid. She's not still hanging around, is she? Uh, we don't really have anybody great for the position, so we leave her there for, for now. If we take a look at our steward, the Countess Bevan of Dalgash. Her husband is the ruler of Meath. So, that's going to be problematic when we go to war with her husband at some stage. For Marshall... Ooh. Oh, to keep him happy for now, we'll have to give it to Fergus, and it looks like he's finally going to get himself a position after all his whining and moaning. In Dirakthuk is better, but Uhmaron, he's a powerful vassal and he'll be given out if we don't give him the job, so we'd better We'd better put him in there. He was always given out to Dearmid that he wanted a job. Well now he has one. Next thing we have to do is sort out a lifestyle. You'll have already seen it when we clicked on Arthur, where he has put his skills. But it did shock me a bit the first time when I saw it. Torturer. Oh, Lord. So we get dark insights. When we torture somebody, we have a 50% chance to increase intrigue or prowess. I should check what his uh, his prowess is like. Dread is quite high already at the moment, and intimidated vassals give us extra tax. I'm not really interested in finishing off the seducer tree. I'm not too sure what, what direction I want to go down. Probably August, like his uncle. Or... Avaricious to get those golden obligations, uh, because that might that might go well with our. I'm sure we have something that'll help hostile schemes. For now, what I am going to do though is I'm going to focus on fertility and attraction and this seduce scheme. I'm going to basically finish off these two, just to just finish off this chain, and then we're going to switch out. I'm not too sure what direction we're going to go just yet. And you know what? We don't really have any great marriage choices. Here is the eldest daughter of the Duchess of Shrewsbury, if I am correct. Maybe she's the second. No, she's the eldest daughter. And Shrewsbury has 1,200 troops. It's one of the best alliances that we can form. It's actually the only alliance that we can really form in this region. So we're going to send that proposal... And we'll be given an opportunity then to form more alliances afterwards, which we will need to do because we are suffering a penalty. I can't remember, is it prestige or piety? Nominate successor. This is actually quite tough. I'm not too sure who we would go for. 
Ortholuk is actually a great candidate. But they are the son of Lachlan Burke. Which doesn't preclude them because it was a matrilineal marriage. Some other candidates that we have. Of course, we could actually try and elect uh, somebody like uh, Dermot's son, Well Patrick, who actually rules me, and who we'll be going to war with quite soon. He is not happy. He is not happy. He desires things that we have. Uh, Brian? Is Brian mad? Do you know what? There you go. He's off his head. He's absolutely stone mad. So we'll uh, we'll currently nominate him as our successor. I believe this is. So his brother was Murica, who was uh, who died after a lengthy torture session. I believe what happened was he was captured by the ruler in Man, tortured, released, and then he died as a result of the uh, the torture. That's what I have a feeling happened. But, um, of course, their father was Brian Mach Murica. And that is Brian who contested uh, Munster at stages against Thorlock, and I think also against Markarthuk and Diarmid. And then, of course, there is Murica, the false king, if I am correct. Yeah, there's his father, Donica, and Brian Brew. So we've that bit sorted out. We have a couple of other things that we need to to deal with. There's a there's a lot of stuff just to to get us going. Uh, day one, our daughter Moraid, we're her guardian. We have good learning, but she's being brought up on the stewardship focus. I don't think our stewardship is great. That's not the worst. I've left her. I've left her there at the moment. This marriage was organised already to my half brother, her uncle, Abdul. And you know what? Uh, seems as though he's down in Dol Clua. It'll help maybe if Scotland comes in against them or something like that. So I'm actually going to allow that. And we will see if we can very quickly form an alliance for our other daughter, uh, Kenoch. What would one of these series be like without a trip to France? And you know what? France has come a whole lot closer to us. So it's not really all that much of a, a trip anymore. The Duchy of... Frankia seems to somehow have this region. Not too sure what happened. Here is the eldest son and heir. Uh, he is hunchbacked. But we will, through his father, get an alliance of 1300. It's not the worst. We will send that proposal. And I think we are going to set the tone of our rule quite early. Here is a distant relative and friend who we imprisoned, Moraid. She was sent to us bound in chains from the court of Diarmid. He heard the two of them talking about us. Can we get a weak hook? It will take away that um, that dread loss and the stress loss because we are callous. We will negotiate that release. Uh, very quickly, what are his actual traits? He is cynical, he is callous, and he is calm. Oh lord, this is... This is the definition of a psychopath. This is the absolute definition of a psychopath. He's already killed some people. Uh, had somebody executed. We could ransom her. For a weak hook. We could negotiate her release. Or we could torture. I think Arthur is quite fascinated by this giant of a woman. We might discover a secret, if she has or knows one. We might gain some dark insights. We did indeed. Oh, the sweet kiss of the whip. It might look innocent, but it can separate flesh from bones just as well as any knife. A truth Mwirin is soon to experience. She will be sleeping on her stomach for quite some time. It didn't have to be done, but we did it anyway. 15% uh, chance that she will gain the lunatic trait. We're going to pretend it had to be done. Our forces just before we uh, continue on with our forces in that region. We will restore some control. And of course, 
Arthur comes to power in the midst of a war. The numbers are looking good. The numbers are looking good. Our only issue, of course, is that we're at war with... We're not at war with Connacht, but we're hostile to Connacht. And the problem there is that we need to basically take lands that they're also trying to siege down. So here is Vile Arthur Moray. Don't be like that. We're friends. We're friends and rivals. So we're her rival. Oh no, she's not our friend anymore. Watch your step, Morid. And here we have that alliance formed with Shrewsbury. And Wirren has died in our dungeons, how unfortunate. He's not the most skilled tactician, but unfortunately he's actually the best that we have. Petty King Arthur will take the place of his uncle in command of the armies. We have no good siege commanders at the moment. I'm also going to try and organize another marriage for him to a another a generous sadist. There you go. Great diplomacy, but predominantly marrying for the intelligent traits. So we're also going to see what traits we're actually missing. Uh, this could be, this woman could be very much put as our prime, well, she's going to become our primary wife anyway. Uh, because that betrothal hasn't occurred yet. And what a life that poor woman had. We are currently seizing down her lands. And we're also being told that we're being um, we're being sieged by somebody, but uh, Ben Ulla has passed away. Our uncle, was it our uncle, uh, took this land from her. Oh, was it our father? It was our father, Mark Yarthuk, uh, took this land from her. And she has, and was married to her for a while, so she has passed away. A uh, cousin of ours has been imprisoned. So, Finula, who has been cavorting with one of the knights at our court. She has been imprisoned by her husband. And what are we looking at? Oh, this devil. And they got through that very quickly. One of our courtiers has been captured and they have uh, killed one of our courtiers. And of course, when I say one of our courtiers, I believe that is our cousin. Uh, we're close to finishing off the siege, so we're going to try and take it. They're going to have a tremendous amount of damage done by the time that we're in a position to deal with them. And at least this is the only good thing is they're moving up towards us. The absolute devil is Iceland. Iceland is a constant menace. Now the only problem is they've gone into Connacht. Where we're going to suffer attrition penalties. I'm going after them. We have a slightly larger force, but the problem is that they will have better trained troops. And so this will be uh, the first battle. And it doesn't look like we're going to have the advantage. No, it looks like they've done tremendous, tremendous wreck against us. We've killed one of their leaders and we've turned it around. Oh, it's going to be a, a hefty, a hefty battle. We won a lot of money but suffered fairly heavy losses. We've been given a lifestyle perk, graceful recovery, I think is what we will go for. Like I said, we're just going to finish off down this uh, route. I'm not too sure if we're going to make much use of it. I haven't seen um, an actual thing pop up for the results of that battle. Uh, we're going to have to turn the army around and march them into... Thalnaradi, there is indeed an attempt to lift the siege. Uh, Kenok has died after a lengthy torture session. I'm not too sure whose court she was in. There is an attempt to lift the uh, the battle here at Carrick Fergus. We're at 80% war score. Uh, Kenok has gone up and has started attacking the Isles, so we might very well be able to get into um, Tyrone. Here is the result of that battle. They had no knights on their side. We're down to four. We're down to just four knights. 
That was a that was a pretty hefty that was a pretty hefty battle. We might be able to raise some more. Uh, raise some more troops. Not a huge lot. Not a huge lot. But we'll bring them up and they'll help with the the siege of Tyrone. And hopefully, if we can take this, we might be able to bring this war to an end. Tyrone, our uh, Ulster's forces are going back in. They're trying to siege back down. Uh, Dalnar the. Moth Thin, Mach Cormac of Desvuen. So Cormac, of course, passed away there recently. I won't say recently, a couple of years ago. And one of our diplomats, our Chancellor, is not exactly doing a great job in trying to sway him. Uh, we're no longer at war with Connacht by the looks of it. So Connacht, I won't say we're no longer at war with them. We're no longer hostile. We will merge these two armies and we will just split them. And we will take the army led by Arthur himself. And we will send them in back into Carrick Fergus. And we've discovered chronicle writing. I'm not too sure we're the head of culture anymore. I actually didn't get a pop-up about it, so I think we are. And there you go. I'm not entirely too sure what actually happened to to achieve that victory, but you know what? We won't we won't complain about it. We will enforce our demands, and we have achieved our uncle's goals of taking Ulster. And we are now, for the first time since coming to power, at peace, putting down his sword for the first time. Since becoming the king, Arthur has started thinking about a different type of sword. He's going to celebrate and get a new wife for himself. She's one of the best in terms of stewardship that is available at the moment. Very high intrigue. And of course, she is also callous. A bit paranoid, but sure. And... An alliance of 85 troops. Oh, boys. Down into our dungeons we go. Here's an interesting character. A poet. However, they are chaste and the stats aren't great. We can only get a hook by ransoming them out. So you know what that means. Back to the torture rack. No need to complicate matters. There's nothing like the good old rack. Oh, he heard me talking. He, he heard that that's the one that we wanted to go for. Uh, we didn't gain any dark insights this time round. They gain 60 stress because they're brave. Here is our new wife, Dear Drew. I won't make her our primary wife. But we will go for... Romance would be the best option. Gain prestige. Improve opinion. Zero percent chance of success. So what we will do instead is go for the seduction scheme. It could be worse. Do you know what? A tenor isn't all that bad. We're going to ransom out our cousin Nula. And there is another member of the court that is... In prison, we're not in a position to ransom her out because, of course, that's being considered at the moment. There actually is her father, Magnus, uh, one of our knights, one of the very few people that we have left as knights, I'd say, at this stage. Uh, oh, Moron has gotten in there. Mordo is doing mighty work. And then we're down to not great numbers, not great numbers. Not great numbers at all. So, yeah, we'll need their Seamus, who our uncle saved in the last episode. He's still wounded. Old fool. So I was looking around my court to see if I could find somebody to marry Seamus off to. And this lady popped up, Guinevere. Look at these for claims. Look at these for claims. All these earldoms. Oh, a duchy or two. The entire kingdom of England. Let's see. Where do we need to click? Arranged marriage. She will indeed accept. Send proposal. 
we're going to wait for the numbers in our army to return to something better than they are at the moment. We do have an option of recruiting more forces, spending money in increasing our levies, our men at arms, but at the moment, at the moment, our allies will be enough to deal with the the immediate problems that we have in this area. So I don't want to spend money in that direction. What we're instead going to look at is uh, wasting more prestige, inviting knights. So we invited knights to the kingdom under our Uncle Diarmid, and he didn't hire any of them because they all wanted 135 gold. They're probably going to ask for something similar this time around, and we'll hire one of them. She's just out of prison, our cousin Nula. We're going to organize a marriage, a matrilineal marriage for her to this Italian gentleman. He's callous, but he's also robust and has good stewardship, which is the traits that she's focusing on as well. Not too sure how that marriage will go, but sure, we'll give it a go. And it's a good thing that we did secure her release from prison because she is the only good person that we have for the position of Seneschal. We have a lot, a lot of control to try and restore. Uh, we don't need a court jester at the moment because our stress is A-OK. -okay. I don't think we have a huge amount of people to educate. So I don't know if we need a court tutor. We'll see what um, more is excellent, however. Our physician, this would be Diarmid's wife that he married in his final days. For now, I think we'll hold off on the position. We'll hold off on any of the others as well. And we'll go to our prison, actually. And do you know what? We let you out. We let you out. We had, we had our fun. We've been told that... The Petty Queen, who we are trying to seduce, she is very close to her father. And that gaining his favor might help to catch Deirdre's attention. So we could give him a weak hook, we could offer him 50 gold. We're calm, callous, and cynical. I'm wondering, are we, are we feckless with money? I think we are. And unfortunately, our wife has not taken any notice. She'd want to take notice soon, because we have found a woman with a lot more claims than she has. And speaking about being feckless with money, here is a knight who has arrived at our court. Not too shabby in terms of prowess. Fairly good martial ability as well. A peasant leader from... Uh, Slovenia. So what we will do is recruit him to court. 80 gold isn't the worst. Make sure he's actually in the army. Uh, here is our... He's a distant relative of ours now. Uh, he's our cousin-in-law, so he's actually joined the army at 10. That's not great. That's not great. Uh, we actually don't have all that many members of the family. Slash any members of the family. In the army. But there you go. What we're going to do is wait until the end of the month. Just to get the next bit of a bonus from restoring control. And I think at that stage we're going to have to begin. The next phase of our third reconquest of the island of Ireland. I'm also thinking of ending the scheme. And starting a different sway scheme against somebody. In my pursuit, it would be very helpful to know exactly what her tastes and preferences are. So we could convince her to tell us, 70% chance. Uh, get our spies, or gain diplomatic practice, plus one diplomacy. Sure, let's, um, let's see if we can get her to tell us, if we can convince her. It seems I was perhaps a little indelicate, so we have failed... It gains bad impressions. We'll let it see out the uh, the few months. And we are told that we are... Is this us? It is indeed. 
So we're in a position to cement that marriage to Shrewsbury. For now, I'm actually going to end that seduction scheme. It had a 95% chance of succeeding. And what I'm going to do instead is begin to sway Lued. Dermot's bishop, before he converted to Catholicism. Uh, he's in poor health. But that's what we want, is that claim to Argyla. I'm not too sure who I married him to. Uh, a high learning figure who was our physician at one stage, Dovdeal. So if we could get him back to the court and take Argyla, that would be uh, tremendously helpful. What we're going to do, what we're going to do at this point in time, I think... He has no allies. His military strength is still quite low. We're going to declare war, and I think we're going to seize... I think we're going to... I was confusing myself there for a second. Leinster. I'm not too sure why Osri didn't split off and become part of Leinster when we, when we lost it. But uh, we are going to declare war against our cousin, if I am correct, to seize... The Duchy of Leinster. We're going to start there. We are in a position to call members of our house to the war. Unfortunately, the guy that we are attacking, male Patrick, uh, his brother, Congus, won't accept an invite, but Abdul, who we have both an alliance to and he's a member of our household, will call him to the war. Which does make me think it might be an idea to break this betrothal. Because we can invite him anyway as a house member. So we don't really need this uh, betrothal. And we could possibly go off and form a new one. Uh, we might we might leave it. We might leave it. But um, we're raising our forces. I should check who is in command. It is Majmir. I think I'll leave him in command. And we'll see if we can march straight for Leinster before any of Meade's forces or Leinster's forces do anything. So Abdul has indeed joined us. So he'll be raising his forces up in this direction. And speak of the devil, here is Morayth, uh, who he is betrothed to. And if we wanted to break it, this would be our last chance, but we'd better not do it in the midst of a war. We will send that proposal, and I believe that is one of our... Uh, the wife that we were trying to seduce. Her father has just died. He'll use that 50 gold we gave him to bury him. And there is Mead's army. They could very well stop in the lands of the Valnaridhi. And here is, is this our, this is our cousin. So this is actually an alliance that Dermid formed uh, just before he died. So do you know what? We will, we will allow that to continue. And another knight has arrived at the court. Well, well, well. Look who it is. So here is his child, Mwerduk Mach Finula. And there is our cousin Finula, who was executed on Duke Tristan of Brittany's orders for the adulterous affair with this guy that led to the birth of this child in the first place. Recruit to court, he wants 75. We'll get this war over and done with and we'll see. There's an interesting character. Abdul has decided, I would say unwisely, to stop his army in Meath. And to stop them in Meath again. Well done, Abdul. Well done. And Constantine was taken prisoner. Our brother Constantine. And Constantine's out of prison again. It's fine. Abdul, bless him, has turned around. We lost a good chunk of troops there in the in the last a few minutes of that siege. Abdul is going in against Dublin as well. Luayd has been swayed, and they managed to get out into Kildare, where they have hit Abdul's army. 
our Earl has wounded. I have a feeling that might be our brother, Edoin. So let's see who they wounded. There's A. It was A they wounded. I thought it was Edoin. I swear I saw Edoin there. I'm not too sure now. Uh, maybe I am imagining things. But uh, Mathodin killed Richard and our new knight and our commander uh, killed one of the enemy knights as well. There's Arthaluk, the poor man. Is this who I'm thinking it is? It is indeed. He has been badly wounded, badly maimed. Uh, somebody who we were looking at as a potential successor for a period of time, our nephew. The son of Lachlan. Uh, he was granted the lands actually of Kildare and it's in Kildare where he has uh, received life-changing wounds to his figure. So this is somebody that I was thinking of actually making our ruler at some stage. Uh, so there you go. That was um, a big dramatic battle. And what we can do is just move ever so slightly south and begin sieging down Orthodox's uh, castle. And we're told that the alliance with our mother-in-law has broken down due to her death from cancer. Here is our brother-in-law. We won't be in a position to negotiate an alliance at the moment. And it doesn't look like we'll be in a position to negotiate an alliance afterwards either. Uh, there'll be an ever so slight penalty. Let's very quickly see if we're in a position to invite this man. We're not, but his, his opinion is improving. His opinion is approving. And of all of our wives, here is the one, uh, Guinevere, the sister of the current Queen of England. I didn't fully realize that. Uh, through, they have different fathers, but their mother had ruled as Queen of England. To the impressive Petty King Arthur of Munster. I call on you to honour our alliance and join me in the war for Philippe's claim on the Kingdom of France. So would this be Philippe? No. No idea who Philippe is. Philippe's there somewhere. We will accept. We will accept. We're not in a position to do anything about that just at the moment. And we could be looking at uh, another situation like what happened to our Uncle Dermot. And there you go, Edoin has indeed died from his wounds. I was thinking he had gotten wounded. Our brother Edoin, who was installed in the lands of the Valnara, the... I was potentially thinking about him as a, as a successor. Uh, his wife also has died, Skahuk. So this entire region has been thrown into chaos, but the poor man, 49 years of age... Uh, died from his wounds in that last battle, received, I think, from one of our knights. So we've gained a, a bit of stress as a result of that. We have that um, that perk, so we'll go for the smooth operator. And what are we going to do from here? We're fighting a lot of wars. We are fighting a lot of wars. We could go for strategist. We could come down this tree. We could go for diplomacy and, and focus on a gust. Or diplomat, even. Especially for that title creation bonus. Our diplomacy isn't great, and you know what? Our marshal isn't great either. No, the main thing is we're not actually in a position to uh, to switch just yet, so we won't we won't worry about it uh, too much at the moment. Ah, oh, Edoin, the poor man. So it looks like this wasn't a good idea. This alliance to France, we will accept this invite to war, in for a penny, in for a pound. And our acquaintance, Murica. Murica Makmurica of Ulster has died. Our cousin, Nula, has had a daughter. So Nula, who we ransomed out not that long ago. Onya, may God grant you long life. Our nephew, Arthaluk, has died. Oh, lads. 
our wife Guinevere has given us a daughter. I think this is our third daughter. And this is the uh, the option that they've given us automatically is Anya, just after allowing Nula to feel very special for coming up with the name Anya and giving it to her daughter. We're going to steal it. There's going to be two Anyas. We're sending our forces in against. I was going to say it's going to be confusing when um, in class when when Anya is called uh, Anya Ivrian. But it's entirely possible that, that we might be having that issue. Our Anya has gained the sickly trait. And I was about to say I would hope that we would be in a position to bring this war to an end. We will enforce our demands. Don't be like that. This happened to me as well. Your father did this to me. So don't, don't you be like that. We now find ourselves in the midst of three wars. At some stage, Tyr Cunnel was making an attack on Leinster. Uh, that war has become our issue now. So we're going to march up on Tyr Cunnel. Uh, we have the two wars in France as well. We have a dungeon, a dungeon full of people. We'll take a look at that first of all. Here's Isolde. She has just lost her husband, Arthurluk. Uh, did any of them pick up that... Um... Okay, they got the quick trait. So we married her predominantly for that genius trait. We can get some money, and do you know what? We do need the money at the moment. Here's Dervla, our prisoner and sister. I like how we... We uh, prioritize the fact that she's our prisoner. So she is in the court of uh, this baby as well, that is now having a, a lot of issues. Here's Ferduk in Mead. He's worth money as well, so we'll ransom him out. And here is A. A can't be ransomed. He has zero prowess. So we will torture him. And we gain some intrigue. So we give him the sweet kiss of the whip. We'll see if we've driven him mad or anything. We haven't. A couple of people have paid us ransoms. So we'll siege down this area. We'll probably try and keep the troops. Uh, Tuavuan is under siege. Let's see who can win the siege. I think we probably will. Oh, no. I actually don't think it's as bad as it could be, but... Cana comes of age. Oh no, this is terrible. That's not what I'm responding to. Lueil has died. Lueil has died at 50. So that's our attempts to to get him to the court and to uh, to take Arguilla. That's gone. Uh, Cana, our daughter has come of age. They grow up so fast. And there's that scheme over and done with. My spy master, Oh Moroin, comes to me and tells me that somebody is attempting to kill Ern Magarda. Something I've just realized. I think we should try and romance this man. Make him our lover, because if he's our spy master and he's minus 51, he is terrified though, so that's the uh, the best thing. Let's try and sway him. So we'll start a scheme to sway him. I think we'll be able to siege down. Do you know what? It's going to be... It's going to be... Close. And once we've this done, then I'm not too sure what we're going to do. We're going to have to try and regroup the numbers some bit. Uh, wherever I go, my courtier... This would be our uncle's wife, Moore, is sure to follow. That look in her eyes, the words on her lips. I know exactly what she is after. So she is our court physician. So we could keep her very close. She might become our lover. She's a very good physician. I'd say a distraction for tonight. And that ends her scheme to seduce us. You devil, you. 
It's actually quite close. It's actually quite close. Our cousin has been taken prisoner in another war. So I'd be hoping that we'd be in a position... There you go. We're going to have to hit that button as quickly as possible. Our wife. The only wife that's actually providing us with an alliance. Even though that alliance has fallen apart because her mother died. She gives us a son. Who we are planning to name after our father, Merkarthuk. May God, may God grant you long life, my son. We will bring this war to an end very quickly. And we have some prisoners. And we're going to have to try and get back onto... Monster Soil, we'll bring him down to here and we'll see that we have a ton of things to do. We have an absolute ton of things to do. We'll go to the console quickly and we will see where else we... Uh -huh, where else we can... Six years. What about Dublin? There you go. Um, couple of months. And... Yeah, we need, to, we need to get some numbers back up before we start thinking of heading for France. I've just ransomed out Dervla for... A tenor. Here is Serla. Fantastic traits. Fantastic traits. I don't think we really have anyone we could try and marry her to. We're fairly high in intrigue. We're not really going to be fighting any wars. Do you know what? Yeah, we'll recruit her to the, to the court and we'll see, possibly, about marrying her to one of our knights. Uh, possibly to our lead commander. And we gain more stressed. Remember when I told you that we didn't need a jester because we are totally unstressed. Well, the dream team of Anya and Anya is no more. Our daughter has died. Oh, for all the trouble that this is causing us, is it worth it? He will be king of France one day. Well, maybe. Maybe. So there is our daughter married to the King of France. We're seeing a neighboring ruler has lost. There is male Patrick and he has lost at all. So our holdings, the uh, the Mead family holdings in Scotland are diminishing and it's entirely possible that Scotland could actually uh, basically seize Mead. I'm trying to see what's actually going on here. The um, He does indeed have the Petty Kingdom. I thought the whole thing had fallen apart. It hasn't. That would have been tremendous if it had. We're back, so, to, uh, to basics. We have a claim on Meath, which we have five years before we can enact. And, of course, we have a claim on this area as well. E Valley. There is Countess Cairnock, the Impaler of E Valley. Uh, her liege, Wiston. And, of course, the, the big issue with Wiston is that he is still the primary heir to our sister-in-law's throne. That could be... That could be awkward. We've raised all the forces that we can. Now, here's our attempts to sway Ochmoroin. Lose 20 gold to make some progress in swaying him. Do you know what? It's it's fine. Um, everyone's terrified of us at the moment for some strange reason. We'll join those two forces. We might leave it until the end of the month and... Oh lord, where, where do we even bring these guys? For the hell of it, I would absolutely love to recruit this man. This sinful devil. We were quite angry about the attitude that our uncle had towards our father. Our father wasn't a sinner. He was just... He was under a lot of pressure. But uh, the only problem is that this guy is in poor health. 55 years of age. Here's Thuhal. Uh, 24. Fine health. We will recruit him to court for 55. And after marching... Thuhal in to join the army. I don't think we have much of a choice, really, other than to to bring the army as it is across. 
and uh, hit this region. We might probably need to put them out to sea, or possibly hold for a while, because here's our major problem. The French allies have split their forces, and we can see two overwhelming armies going in against them. Uh, if we land, we wouldn't be in a position to do anything, so I'm afraid to say what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cancel that order to withdraw them, and then basically see what the results of these two battles are. So, the actual main French army has managed to escape our stone-crazy cousin, if I am correct. Uh, Brian has died from his injuries, so we have a new heir, a new successor, Constantine. Uh, here's one of the uh, the French armies. Uh, Upper Lorraine is getting a bit of a baiting. The main French army is going into some chunk of the Holy Roman Empire. And I think that's probably our best approach. That's probably our best approach, is to head... For Arnheim, it's going to be a bit of a journey, but you know what? We can uh, we can do a bit of sieging, and unfortunately, we've no we have no good siege officers. We have nobody that can actually uh, facilitate with any sieging, which is a bit of a nuisance. Our secondary wife is pregnant. Uh, Ohmeron has remained unswayed. We have brought in our forces into Germany, and we are beginning to see that the English are preparing to give battle. We have a disembarkation penalty, and we're going to suffer heavy losses if we come across to them. We're going to suffer, what are we looking at? 114 and 114, 200... And something, something casualties that are going to knock us down if... If we can get in there, we could still help. Uh, I'm not too sure how late we're going to actually get into the battle. It doesn't look like we're in a position to help. We had that disembarkation penalty. Our lover has died. One of our acquaintances, uh, Mathedon, has died. And war against the tyranny of the king of France has one of the wars changed not entirely sure um, what happened there it was quite close we had that disembarkation penalty France got into a bad position if they'd been able to retreat one more square now our forces are not made for continental warfare we have been getting by fairly well uh, at the moment with the uh, the forces that we have in in Ireland, but our armies are not made for continental warfare. A good showing, a good showing. But like I said, we are not we are not designed to be out here. Philippe Capet has died, and I believe that it might actually no, it can't have been his claim. So they lost. Um, oh my God, a considerable. Amount of knights lost on our side. Uh, Eustace of Bologna was killed by Philippe Capet. So maybe that's what they meant by the uh, the change in that war. Let's just check very quickly. So it's turned into a war against the tyranny of King Vizan. I'm kind of, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of confused. And the numbers have now indeed turn dramatically against us. So this is usually what happens with France. France is calling us into another war. While we have our forces here, we will accept. I'm not too sure where France is actually going. I think it's going to try and lift some of the sieges. Uh, we're going to put this area to siege. I'm not too sure do we want to follow them in and actually begin helping with these issues. Maybe we will. We've been told that uh, the the next in line has changed yet again. And we have a son, a second child, by our wife, a second son. 
Faircar, which has been a good, strong name in the family to date. And so yet another episode in yet another series ends with a zoom in on the north of France, an area that has been good to us in terms of alliances supporting us, but has been an absolute debt trap over the last two years of making videos when, uh, when we get called in there. We're not doing great. We're not, like I said, we're not built for continental wars. People have been saying to uh, to increase the uh, the size of the armies. And as long as we stay on the island of Ireland and make alliances in and around Ireland, pushing up the, the armies, spending money on the armies, hasn't been massively necessary. A couple of good knights and a bit of a numerical advantage and we have been fine. However, fighting continental wars like this, especially with those two big heavy penalties coming in late to that battle, it might have been a better idea to have stayed back, but I have no doubt that they would have just pushed on and attacked us afterwards. It would be better if France made for the army, I believe this is Flanders, if they, uh, if they attacked um, this army and try to, to knock them out. But they're doing their own thing. They're trying to win back some sieges. We're going to continue to help France in three wars. One of them looks to be coming to an end uh, shortly. So Lord Lorraine is going to take a county. Do you know what I'd say? Just let them have that county. The only good thing is that we are a dreaded and terrifying figure to our vassals. And nobody is even contemplating Independence factions are rebelling against us. The blood seeping out from under the doors of our dungeons have made sure that nobody is going to get too uppity. And we have a truce with our nephew, our cousin, I'm not too sure, that we're waiting for it to end. So do you know what? What better way? What better way to spend a couple of years than uh, fighting incompetently? in the north of France. Thank you for joining me on this episode, and I hope you'll join me in the next one when we see how many more knights we get killed.